Hi, this is Elizabeth from Felted Sky Studio, here with the instructions for our Mountain Sunset Needle Felting Kit. So if you've purchased the kit, there are just a couple other things you'll want to have before you get started. The most important is a foam mat for needle felting. So you just want to make sure that your foam is dense enough and thick enough that your needle is not going to poke through it. So that's what we're using as our work surface. And also, if you want to have a pair of sharp scissors handy, we're going to use some scissors to cut off excess wool when we're finished with the project. Let me go ahead and open up the kit here and tell you about what's inside. So just so you know what all of these things are, this is a pre-felt that I actually make myself out of wool from Kentucky near where I live. So that's what we're using as the backing, kind of the canvas that we're working on. And then in the kit here we have two preparations of wool. So we have roving, that's what this is. So the roving is where the fibers are all lined up, kind of going in the same direction and it's kind of a, this one is like a thin rope so that's the roving and then the batting that we have in here comes in a roll sometimes it's hard to find the end here so that's going to unroll somehow here we go and those fibers are still kind of tangled up a little more and going in different directions and the batting generally has a little more texture to it so those are the kinds of wool we have in the kit. Then I just want to say a couple things about the needle here. So this is the felting needle that we'll be working with to uh, make the project. And these are very sharp, so that's why it comes in this piece of foam board, both so that the needle is not going to get bent, but also so that no one will get poked by the needle. So it's good to keep it back in your piece of foam board when you're not using it. Or another place that I will sometimes store my needle is in the side of my foam mat. So I just poke it in there sometimes also. And especially if you have kids or pets in the house, it's just good to always store your needle when you're not using it. So let me just say one more thing about the instructions in the kit here. Uh, this shows the colors that are included, so you can kind of get those organized before you begin. And, and I just want to point out that each step, these are pictures actually taken from the video. So uh, by each number, there's a, another set of numbers here, and that's the timestamp for where this takes place in the video. So that's just handy to know if you want to fast forward or rewind and find a place again that you want to see over again. You can use this to kind of follow along and even if you're watching the video, that can help you to move back and forth through the video if you need to see anything again. All right, so I think now we're ready to get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is put our piece of pre-felt down on the mat and then find the brighter yellow, this is called butternut, and we're going to take it and we're going to just draft it, this is called, very, very slightly. Just pull it between your hands, just very gently. It's going to kind of flatten it out, smooth it out a bit. Then we're just going to take that and put it right down onto our backing. I'm going to hold here and pull. So we're going to arrange this just in the middle. Let me show you on our original picture here. So we're putting this yellow in this section here. So I'm going to overlap just a little and pull again. And then we'll put this one more piece down here might move it up just slightly. It's going to look something like that. And then I'm just going to take the needle, the felting needle here, 
and start poking. So we're just poking down into this fiber and it's going to attach it onto the backing. So you can hear it hitting the mat. That's what it sounds like when you're uh, poking the needle into the mat, but that's fine. That is just what happens when you're working on a flat piece like this. So we're just poking and that's really all we're doing. We want to poke all over this color until it's really flattened and secured down. So we need to go over the whole thing a few times probably. You can see if you want to take the needle, you can kind of pull the wool if it's not laying exactly how you want. Kind of push it and pull it into place and then poke it. Okay, so for me to secure the rest of this, you can see we're well on the way, but I'm going to speed up the video just so we can move it along and then we will talk again as soon as I get all of this really nicely flattened and attached. Okay, so I've got that all secured, and now we're going to get the color called eggplant. So that's this one. And we're going to take this and kind of do the same thing, just a tiny, tiny bit of drafting to kind of smooth it out, get the fibers all laying, kind of flatten. So then we're going to lay this at the top here, and again I'm going to hold and just pull with my other hand to take the excess off. I think I need probably one more piece here. So we're going to leave that there and then I want to put in a little bit of the pink and the orange colors now. So this is the color rhubarb. And I'm going to pull off from the end here. I'm going to hold and then pull off just some little wispy small pieces here. And I'm going to lay these so that they're coming in from the side, but not all the way into the middle. So we're going to put a few of those on. And if, you've, if you get too much, you can always pull some off. So we're just going to arrange these here as part of our sunset. Something like that. And then we're going to take a little bit of our orange called pumpkin and going to put that in as well. So we're just kind of laying that in among the rhubarb there. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm going to now put in a little more eggplant. I like the eggplant to kind of be right at the edges, not coming in quite as far. And just remember where your edge is there. So sometimes when it gets covered up with wool, you forget exactly where it is. Okay. 
there's what I have and I'm going to go ahead and just poke all of this down now. So we're doing the exact same thing. We're just poking until the fiber is attached and flattened out and I'm kind of poking, you know, back and forth here because the fibers are going in that direction. So kind of starting where these fibers start and then poking across. All right, so I think I will speed up the video again and you can watch just as I get all of this attached and can get all of yours attached down to the backing as well. Okay, so all of this is pretty well secured now. And once you are at this point, you can look and I can see if I pick up my mat here that I don't have quite all of the backing covered up. So if you have any places like that, all you need to do is just take another piece of the color and just put it right on over top of what was already there. Hopefully you can see that well enough here on the video. So then we're just going to poke that right down over top of what we had there. And I still think I have one little spot up here in the corner. I want to cover up. Okay, so now I'm going to get the blue, it's called Blue Lagoon, and I'm going to pull off some more little wispy pieces of that. And I'm going to put one, spread it out right up here, near the top there. And I'm just going to put just a couple other really small little wisps of this. Maybe one on the right and one on the left. And then we'll poke those down. And you can alter the sunset a bit if you have different ideas about how you want it to look. They all end up a little bit unique. Okay, so all of my fibers are fairly secure. You can always go back and poke more later if you see that they need a little more poking. So the next thing we're going to do is to put in the sun here. I'll show you on the original. So we're just making a little bit of a round ball here. So this is the lighter yellow called sweet corn. So I'm gonna, just going to pull off a little bit here and then I'm going to roll it in my hand 
and so that I'm jumbling up the fibers. Then I'm going to take it with my fingers and just kind of fold it over on itself a bit and just kind of start shaping it into a nice round sun shape. We don't need it to be completely round because the bottom half is overlapped by the mountains that we'll be putting in next. So something like this, we're going to put it in right at the horizon line. And then we're just going to poke this down. And as you're poking, you can kind of still shape the edges here, again, by pulling or pushing the wool with the needle before you poke it down. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of get my edges first, make sure I have nice rounded edges here, kind of carefully arranging with the needle and then poking the wool down. So once I'm happy with the edges, then the rest of it I'm just going to poke straight down. And there we go. And if you're not happy with the shape, it's possible to pull this off and try again, or to continue with a little bit of shaping after it's on there. So now I'm going to pull out the lighter green that we have in here called Sage, and I'll show you on our original. So we're going to put in these hills or mountains, whatever, whatever it looks like to you, and I'm wanting them to kind of be a little higher at the edges here and dip down where our sun is. We're going to just put these in overlapping a little bit, what we already have on here. Then once I've gotten that in place, I'm going to hold again and pull off the excess. And this may be enough, but if you want to add a little onto the sides here, you can always add a little more in. Like that. So once that's arranged, what we're going to do with that is we're going to not poke down onto it quite as much. We're going to leave it so that it has a bit of a, where it's coming up off the backing just a little bit. So it's not perfectly flat, it just gives it a little bit more dimension. So we're going to poke in at kind of this angle and we're going to catch just the edge of it back here. So we're going to get this edge secured first, poking in at this angle. And then we're going to catch the bottom edge. And this, we're kind of angling the direction we want to push the wool. So we don't want to flatten it out completely. So then in the middle, I'm going to poke just very, very gently, but not hard and not to the point that I'm flattening out this roving all the way. So I'm just catching enough of it with this gentle poking that it's going to stay in place. but not so much that it's completely flat. So I have something like that now, and if I wanted to, if you want to tinker with your shaping or add a little more in, we could put on a little bit more here. You can always go back and kind of tinker with things if you want to. So 
Okay, now we're going to grab a darker green. This is moss. So I'm going to lay moss in here, overlapping, and pull off the excess. So again, I'm going to do the same thing and just catch the edge here, kind of angling the needle. I'm going to catch the bottom edge. I'm just poking the very edge there. And then poke gently through the center here of the roping. Okay, so now we're going to get this color, which is thyme, and put it at the very bottom here. And this I like to poke flat. I'm just going to poke this all the way down. This reminds me of maybe a river down here in the hills flowing through, maybe a lake. Okay, and then the last part of the project is with our black batting here. So I'm just going to take and pull off pieces here, and I might even spread out the fibers a little bit, and I'm just going to put them on, so these are like trees in the foreground here, so I'm just going to arrange it where I want them to go, and then just poke, and with this again, I'm not poking the black down to be super flat. I want it to be well attached, but I'm leaving a little bit of texture to it. So as long as it's on there, I'm going to leave it with some texture. And you can kind of take your needle if you want to do more with the tree shaping here. You can poke and kind of play around with how you have the shape of this black batting in here. So we're just going to bring it down, and again, this is a place where you can kind of decide how much of it you want in here and how much you want to cover up what you've already done. So we're going to just come and do the same thing on the other side. If you want to go back in and change the shaping at all, you can always go back and add a little more in after the fact. Okay, so there we have it. And the only other thing we're going to need to do is to trim. 
Okay, so we're just going to pull the backing up off of the mat. Sometimes you have to give it a bit of a tug because the fibers do come through and get a little bit attached to the mat. And then we'll turn it over and grab the scissors here. And we're just going to cut off all of this excess that's on the sides. So I'll just discard that and then it's good to put it back on the mat one more time and see if there's any places that need a little more poking. Sometimes when you pull it up it seems like some of the fibers detach just a bit and sometimes it can use a little more work just to make sure everything is nicely secured. So once you're happy with that, then we can test it in the frame. So here I have my frame and I'm just going to go ahead and put it in, see how it's looking. Sometimes you need to trim down a little bit more at this point. I probably could trim a bit here, but we'll see if this will work just for the purposes of the video here. And there we have it. So thanks for joining me to see how to make a mountain sunset needle felting scene. And if you've enjoyed this project, I hope that you will check out our other kits and our other needle felting supplies at Felted Sky on Etsy or FeltedSky.com. So again, thanks for joining me and happy felting.